Hey, fellow murder peeps, I'm Sarah. And I'm Anthony. Welcome to Bonding Over Murder, the show where I tell Anthony true crime stories he's never heard of before. That's because I don't research murderers in my time off. Well, I do, so <laughs> suck it. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, got a case you want us to cover? Email us at bondingovermurder at gmail.com. Bum, bum, boop, doo. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. It's the a- hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was transitioning into the uh, into the main segment. Oh, mm. the, no, 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 no. Not there yet? Not there oh, yet. Oh, shit. No. <laughs> it's just a little too early. Right. Just, a, it's just a smidge. All right. I'll, I'll wait for it. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about Betty Lou Dunavant, famously known as Betty Lou Beats. Now you can do it. Bum bum doop a doo. <laughs> uh, born on March 12, 1937 in Roxboro, North Carolina, Betty Lou was the oldest of her two other siblings. When she was five years old, her family moved to Hampton, Virginia, which is three hours and 19 minutes away. Another article said Danville, Virginia, which is 42 minutes away. Don't, I think it's Hampton, but I'm going to say both just in case. I'm chuckling at the fact that the last episode I kept, you know, telling the main murderer, Betty White. And now we actually have a murderer named Betty. Betty Lou. <laughs> Betty Lou. It's one of those double names. The distant cousin of Betty White. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say no. <laughs> uh, they moved because their parents got better paying jobs. Both of them. Hooray! For yes. simple reasons. Yeah. Uh, around this age is when Betty claimed that her father and a few other people sexually assaulted her. Oh. Around five. Wow, that's young. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I guess I should have done trigger warning. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's gross. My bad. <laughs> that's my bad. Borsh and sadness. Well, there's lots of um, bad things. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying one of these people turns into a murderer, do you? Yeah, her. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, eventually, she became deaf due to contracting measles uh, from getting multiple ear infections because of it. This is why you vaccinate. Always vaccinate. <laughs> When she was 12 years old, her mother experienced a psychotic break, which caused her to become hysterical and experience hallucinations, which led to her being institutionalized. Oh, boy. Yeah. Betty Lou's not had a good run of things so far. No, she she really doesn't. This is the tragic story of Betty Lou. Pretty much, yeah. Aw. Uh, this was a huge blow to the family. Betty took on the responsibility of caring for her younger siblings while her father got depressed and started drinking. Okay, how, how old is Betty Lou at this point? 12. Oh, now she's 12. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I give you the information I have. I keep thinking of, like, um, uh, the Grinch. So it's Betty Lou Who. <laughs> I know That's it's Cindy Lou. Cindy Lou. <laughs> but this is, this is Betty Lou Who. <laughs> That's cute, actually. I like that. Oh, Betty Santa, Lou. who are you stealing our Christmas tree? <laughs> Why is she Tiny Tim? <laughs> <laughs> because everyone in Christmas becomes Tiny Tim. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, on to the dark shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> his drinking led to him beating Betty Lou using his belt over minor things when he drank. And just like that, I can't joke anymore. No. There, there goes the jokes. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have a moment of sadness. <laughs> okay. No. Well, no. Uh, later in life, Betty began taking uh, Dexatrim, which is an over the counter diet pill. Ah. Uh, so some rare side effects of this pill include acute mania, anxiety, paranoia, agitation, and hallucinations in some women. But you look fabulous. Potentially. <laughs> oh, There's no guarantee. <laughs> There's never any guarantee of these diet pills. They never work. Oh, boy. If you can get past all those symptoms, though. Just well, they're the taste. rare ones. I'm only mentioning them based on what happens next. Ah. I wouldn't be mentioning them otherwise. They're the rare ones. So yeah. she, she was that one in a million that got these side effects. So Betty Lou started experiencing extreme mood swings due to the pill. She would become a different person, and her family said that sometimes she would abruptly start talking in a coarser voice mid-conversation and begin swearing. Yeah, it's time to quit the diet pill when that stuff starts happening. Yeah. She also never remembered these incidences after they occurred. 
Hey, Dad, have you seen my purse? I don't know where it is. <laughs> Fuck everything. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> it's like, oh, like, do you, do you know where my purse is? Yeah, and then he'd be like, uh, do you remember what just happened? <laughs> no. No, what happened? Tell me. It's time to quit the diet pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, fast forward a little bit. So, when Betty was 15 years old, her mother arranged for her to marry her first husband, 19-year-old Robert Branson. Ah. So, he's 19, she's 15, old, and it was arranged. Good old Bobby Branson. Or been, been Robbie, pressed. I don't know. Uh, so, because she got married so young, she wasn't able to finish school. And only received a grade nine education. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, a year after they got married, she claimed the relationship was abusive and the couple separated. Oh. Not long after, Betty. Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie. Bobby. Robbie. You said Robert, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. But Bobby. He's later, short. his son's called Robbie. So I assume we can call him Robbie as well. I'm going to call this man Bobby and I'm going to stick with it. All right. Bobby the abuser. We all expected better of you, Bobby. <laughs> but we didn't get it. No, we did not, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so not long after they separated, uh, Betty Lou tried to commit suicide, and the couple reconnected afterwards. Not because of the suicide, I, I imagine, just... Are you, not because of the... So why did you blend it into the same sentence? That's what they said! Put a period in between those two statements! No! Yes! No! Betty Lou tried to kill herself. And then they got then... back together. Then later in her life, for no reason well, at not, all. Well, really... not much later. It's very. She moves like she moves through people very fast, like husbands. She <laughs> faster moves faster than we move through this plot. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, the sad life of Betty resumes. So at twenty nine, Betty started going to the bars to get attention she wasn't receiving at home. Yes. So all the men, as were, many of us do. Yeah. Well, you don't go to the bars. You get enough attention, right? Right. But I wasn't including myself in the mix. Either way, lots of people go to a lot of bars, usually to socialize with humans, to which they will get attention from. Very good. Yes. Anyway, uh, it became a more frequent thing until Robert finally had enough and divorced her in 1969. They were together a total of 17 years and had six children. Wow. And nine grandchildren, and I think a few great-grandchildren. I don't remember the number, though. All right, we're eight minutes in. I'm going to say this is happily ever after. and We're going to leave it there. (laughs) Sorry, guys. No. (laughs) Uh, a year later, she met Billy York Lane, who proposed to her only a few months after they started dating. Because that's always a good idea. Wait, isn't she with Bobby at the time? No, Bobby divorced her, I said. I thought they reconnected after she tried and to... And then quit. he, like, they did, They separated, and then they got together, and then because she kept going to the bars, he divorced her. Oh, I missed that part. Yeah. Okay, so she divorced... So, she, so Bobby divorced her, and then she's like... In 1969. Goodbye, Bobby. Hello, Billy. A year later, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the relationship became abusive very quickly, like days after the wedding. Like oh. He started becoming abusive. Billy! Yeah. <laughs> we expected better of you, Billy. I uh, got to the point where he would punch her in the face and throw her oh. around almost daily. Okay, well, joking stops. Yeah. I'm trying to tell jokes here. Jesus, this is a bummer. Yeah, well, I thought I'd do, like, two females for one release, you know? Yikes. Yeah, I know. Um, we haven't even got to the murder yet. It's just the sad life of Betty Lou. Well, you know, we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's sad. Anyway, um, so she got a restraining order against him after three months of being together and divorced him two months after that. Stupid Billy. But on January 17, 1972, she shot him uh, with her, or she shot at him with her 22 caliber pistol after he broke her nose. Wow. So, I mean, but she missed, it sounds like. Yes, yes, he did not die. But she also, did he get hit at all? Um, I couldn't find that. Uh, I don't know. I, shot, I'm assuming not. Yeah, shot at in, implies no. Yes, okay. shot at. Uh, she was charged with assault with intention to commit murder with malice. Yeah, she's the bad guy. Yeah. No. In the 70s, yes. Yikes. Yeah. Um, a few days before the hearing, Billy went to the police and signed an affidavit stating that he threatened her. So the court dropped the murder charge and made it a misdemeanor aggravated assault charge. Wait, was that Billy being noble? I guess. Weird. She could have been charged with murder, like attempted murder, but, you know, he was like, no, I threatened her, guys. And then they're like, okay, well, she didn't try to murder you then. She was just, you know, aggravated assault weird. charge. Yeah. That's a weird story. I don't yeah. understand you, Billy. Yeah, I don't understand it either. Um, 
So she got fined $100 and then also an additional $50 for court costs. Okay. The judge also returned the 22 caliber pistol. To Betty? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Here you go, Betty. Here's your murder weapon back. No, she didn't kill him. <laughs> Here's your attempted murder weapon yes. back. A year later, she began dating her third husband, Ronnie Selkeld. Wow. And in 1978, they got married. <laughs> Bobby, Billy, and Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ronnie. Please be the good one. Yeah, I'm not really sure where they are in this because they, she grew up in Virginia, but she ends up in Texas, which okay. is not, which is not a good place to be when you're charged with murder, I will say. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Ends up in Texas. Yeah. So I don't know where she is right now. Well, who knows? Maybe she doesn't murder anybody. Maybe Ronnie happens to be a real sweetheart. Well, he doesn't, but he doesn't get murdered. So oh. spoiler alert. Hmm. But um, so things started out good as so far they've been doing. and eventually. This one also turned abusive with oh. Ronnie pushing Betty around when they argued. Ronnie, yeah. we expect it better of you. I know. <laughs> Where do these guys keep coming from? I have no idea. God damn it, Billy, Bobby, and Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> you fucks. <laughs> Billy, Bobby, and Ronnie. <laughs> Three biggest fucks you've ever seen. <laughs> well, we can add a Jimmy in there later. There's a Jimmy. There's, there's a Jimmy. Jimmy. Jesus. <laughs> Whatever. And a Doyle. Oh, oh wow. Okay, that's <laughs> Billy, Bobby, Ronnie, Jimmy, and Doyle. Well, actually, Doyle and then Jimmy is the order that it's in. Well, well okay. Now you're just messing up the story. So now we're at, we're on Ronnie right now, and Ronnie, Ronnie Ronnie's a fuck, yep. right? Uh, so apparently she kicked him out after he had an incident with her daughter. I couldn't find out what that incident was. I don't trust you, Ronnie. Yeah, I think he tried to grow up some Oh, some God. Peeps. Ronnie. That's what I'm assuming the incident would be, because all these guys are sketch as fuck, so, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, after she kicked him out, she attempted to run him over with her car. Yeah, I take that, Ronnie. But he dodged <laughs> in time and wasn't injured. <laughs> Dodged. So she's tried to. <laughs> so she's, she's tried, tried to, kill, to. Yeah, she's tried to kill both her abusing husbands or two of her abusing her husbands. Her first two her abusing second husbands. Second two. But she didn't try and kill Bobby. She tried to kill oh, Billy. that's true. She didn't try to kill Bobby. No, she tried to kill Billy and then Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't succeeded. Fucking Billy and God, Ronnie. God damn it, Bobby, Billy, and Ronnie. You guys suck. And it just keeps going. Uh, so in 1979, she married her first hus- fourth husband, sorry, Doyle Wayne Baker. Doyle. Doyle, yeah. Doyle. 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 Oh. What? That's weird. He does not roll. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, after a few months, he also started to beat her. Doyle. Yeah, I know. God damn it, Doyle. <laughs> I don't know where all these abusive fucks are coming from. They just like, oh. I just feel like they're like, oh, this is a woman I can control. Like, well, you you'll know. note that I'm not throwing any blame on Betty because she doesn't deserve it. But where no. the fuck do these dudes keep coming from? I I don't know. I really uh. don't know how you find this many abusers in a row. Just like shitty luck, I guess. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. Fourth. Man, I would lose my faith in humanity if I was on my fourth husband. And he's After fourth my and... father and several other men as a child sexually abused me. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, it's, there is the pattern there, right? When you're abused, somehow you always manage to find abusers. I don't yeah. know. If, I don't know if it's the abusee finds the abusers because it's what they know, or if abusers can like sniff out a vulnerable person because they've been abused. I think it's a mix. I think. Well, the funny thing about Betty is she's not that vulnerable. She's like, she's gun toting, car running over. I mean, she's not successful at it, but we all. Yet? Like, yeah, we all gotta start somewhere. You can do it, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> you get that, Billy. Well, he, she didn't. Oh. Billy's still alive, as far as I understand. Billy totes did. No. Well, actually, yes, 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 he did. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yes, he totes did. Anyway. Um, her children told her to leave the relationship, but she said she was too afraid. Uh, she admitted to her daughter, Shirley, that her only escape from him was to kill him. And thus, Doyle Baker disappeared in 1981. Ah, good. There you go, Betty. <laughs> third time's the try on the murder try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not Third time's not the try for husbands. However, attempting to murder them the third time was the try. Well, I guess technically she's been married six times because uh, I read... That she married Billy twice, technically. 
Ah. I think it was Billy. Yeah, it was Billy. I swear I've changed. Oh, that makes me sad. That might have been actually what he said. Gross. (laughs) Probably said exactly that. Don't beat people, especially your spouse. Like, don't do it. It, That should be common sense, but I'm going to say it as many times as you need to hear it. Yeah. I mean, even if your peen is as small as a microgram, just (laughs) don't beat people. Find other ways to relieve your frustration at your tiny peen complex. (laughs) Personally, Super Smash Brothers. That's a good way of doing it. Or you can actually just go in like martial arts and fight. You beat up a Pikachu. You'll feel better. Pikachu, I think, is pretty decent, isn't it? Aren't they? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Slam yourself a Jigglypuff and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it more so he'd get the frustration out by slamming Bowser. Because Bowser's tougher and bigger, so the bigger, you know. Like, yeah, but he's, a, he's abusing Betty. So I'm just, you know, if, you're, if your inclination is to go after vulnerable people, you, you beat the shit out of Jigglypuff and call it a day. Or Princess Peach. Yeah, well, Princess Peach. Well, yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, a year after his disappearance, she married Jimmy Don Beats. Wow. In 1982. Jimmy Don Bates. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to have a fun, fun time with these names. <laughs> okay. So, let's uh, look at the check again. Bobby? No, no, that didn't work out. Bobby was Billy? No, no, Billy didn't work out again. And she shot at him. Yeah, she shot him. Billy again? No, 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 that definitely didn't work out the second time with Billy. Ronnie? No, no, it didn't work out with Ronnie. Well, Doyle's dead, so we know it didn't work out with Doyle. <laughs> And, and who's this new guy? Jimmy Don Beats. <laughs> Jimmy Don Beats. He Don Beats them good. <laughs> so I couldn't find any evidence that he also beat her. Apparently she confided in, I think, her son that, you know, uh, she preemptively killed him to well, because yeah. she felt like she was, he was, it was only a matter of time before he would you beat her. You gotta get there, yeah. By this point, just marry him for a couple of months and then shoot him. <laughs> You're safer that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jimmy Don Beats. <laughs> well, it was, you know, over a year later. Okay. Uh, so they got married in 1982. And on August 5th, 1983, Betty told her 19 year old son, Robbie Branson II, that she was going to kill Jimmy. Robbie Branson II. Well, it's Robert Branson II, but I thought Robbie was more fun. Bobby. The second, Robbie. The second Bobby. <laughs> Bobby the second. (laughs) But um, she then told him to leave the trailer home that they were living in because she didn't want him there that night. Ah. So he told uh, courts later that he went for a ride on his motorcycle for a couple hours and then returned home. By the time he arrived, Betty had already killed Jimmy by shooting him in the head with a 38 caliber pistol and his body was already covered with a sleeping bag. Take that, Jimmy. You might have thought about abusing at some point and there you go. Now, her plan... Isn't actually that bad. Like it's it's kind of clever. I'll get to it. But I was kind of like it's like of disposing it, like you know getting rid of suspicion okay. on her. It's not it's not bad. Like she she definitely had multi prongs to the to the plan. I think. Okay. Um. So Robbie helped his mother move the body to a fake wishing well in the backyard that Jimmy and Robbie had made together. Oh. Um. So. He said he never saw the body, but um, when he was stuffing it down the well, uh, he said it felt like the right weight that uh, Jimmy was. I mean, who else would it be? Well, exactly. <laughs> Especially, uh, I'm going to kill Jimmy. You go away for the night. Also, Jimmy wasn't seen after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next day, Betty scattered Jimmy's bottle of nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin tablets on the bottom of his fishing boat, and Robbie set the boat adrift on the lake. Why would you put his nitroglycerin tablets on a boat? I'll explain. Betty then reported him missing, claiming he was on a fishing trip. Okay. To show that that was his boat, because he took his heart medicine with him and he... on the boat, and then um, I'm guessing jizzling them on the on the ground was um, to show that like maybe he was having heart troubles, was trying to get the pill, didn't, and then like fell off the boat. Okay. It's yeah, kind of what I it's thought. It's not, not terrible. Like I said, it's, it's you know, like, I think it's not a bad plan. For a finishing touch, I think I would leave the bottle, like, open and spilt in the boat and then call it good. But either way, that's not bad. It's not yeah, bad. It's, it's, not it's, bad. It's, it's setting up a plausible yeah. scene. Because the empty boat was, was found on August 6th, which led investigators to believe he drowned, and a search for his body in the lake 
lasted three weeks, which obviously was unsuccessful because that's not where he was. Yeah. They they legit thought he was drowned for three weeks. Yeah, pretty good. I, yeah. I really hope Jim, like, I don't want to hope this, but I hope Jimmy had it coming because <laughs> now I feel bad. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't find any evidence of him beating her. She but felt like it was only a matter of time, but then again... Is she, what she told her son, I think. But her track record, she might, at this point, very, and for very good reason, she might be just paranoid. Well, she's been married five to five different people, and each time it's great for the first little bit, and then they start abusing her. So yeah, yeah I would, I totally get it. I, I I'm understand. hoping she wasn't paranoid, because if she was paranoid, you'd think the answer would be, just don't get married. So if she's on her fifth husband, then she feels like, like once again, she maybe she's to... one of those people that's also afraid of being by themselves and has issues with abandonment. Yeah. You know, like, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what to think about this one, but I'm just hoping Jimmy had it coming. Otherwise I feel bad for Jimmy. Yeah. I don't know if he had it coming, but um, we're just going to assume he did based on her track record of husbands. God damn Bobby, Billy, Ronnie, and Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> we know they all had it coming. <laughs> Um, so in 1985, so two years later, yeah, two years later, the police had compiled enough evidence against Betty to get a warrant to search her property. So the remains of Jimmy Don Beats and Do- Doyle Wayne Baker were found, both with shots to the head with the same 38 caliber pistol responsible. Oh my. On June 8th, 1985, Betty was arrested with capital murder. Betty pleaded not guilty, and at the time she claimed that her children killed them and not her. Oh, classy. So that part, I'm, I'm like, come on, Betty. Okay, so I, I guess Betty's not... But thinking. capital punishment, you know, like, they're going to execute you. I've... So throw your kids at them? <laughs> no, that's, that's true. There's no that's excuse for that. That's even more of a reason not to... <laughs> wow, Betty. <laughs> yeah, that part, I'm kind of like, why? Oh, okay. Why are you doing Never that? Never mind. My, my sadness for Betty is starting to wane. <laughs> that's really the only thing that I just, that I don't like about... Betty, oh, just rest- that little thing. Yeah. Just the little thing that she tried to throw her children to the electric chair to save herself so she could find a, yet another Bobby. Yeah, so two <laughs> of her children testified against her and admitted to involvement in hiding the bodies. So the two children were uh, Shirley and um, and Robbie. Yeah. So I believe Shirley helped out with uh, Doyle. And then Robbie helped out so your kids, with uh, Jimmy. Your kids that like loyally help you mur- uh, move your murder victims, and then you try and throw them to the wolves. <laughs> wow, Betty. I mean, her four other children, I believe, spoke for her and tried to mention. Yeah, her but views. she still tried to say that her kids like it doesn't yeah. matter, Betty. We expected better of you. I know. I know. Oh, that's, that's the part Betty. I don't like. That's that's just a little part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was found guilty and given the death penalty. Well, there you go, Betty. They never tried Betty for the murder of Doyle Baker because of this. Because, you know, she already got the death penalty. Yeah. So they can't do anything else. They can't do anything worse. Um, so Betty was convicted during a time when battered woman syndrome wasn't recognized as a defense that could be used in court. Right. So it is more of a thing now, but it's still um, in the States, I believe. There are some states still I was reading... That, um, you know, what happens behind closed doors is, like, none of our business type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think that's a lot of states. But so the, the theory could be that, you know, with the, with the severe amount of abuse that she went through, that she, she could almost make an insanity plea. Like, she wasn't in a, a healthy state of mind. Well, of course be, not. Yeah. She's been abused her entire life. Yeah, yeah. By first her father, who's supposed to protect her. And then everybody subsequently after that, including yeah. her mother, who arranged an, a marriage for her. Yeah. yeah. Like, poor woman never stood a chance. Yeah, it's true. Still threw her kids to the wolves, though. So, I mean... I think people I, do, I would, people I would do be, crazy things yeah, to survive. I would be okay with an insanity plea here. I'm not vengeful, but no. at the same time, I don't think that I'm ever... not cool. I don't think I'm ever going to be, you know, overly fond of the woman, despite what she's been through. Again, it's... What what you do when you're desperate kind of shows that your your inner character. If if when push comes to shove, you'll throw your kids to the wolves. That yeah, that's kind of the person you are, I think. Mm. But you know what? Having never been in that situation, I guess I can't judge. No, I like I like to different. think I won't throw my future children to the wolves, but uh, I suppose I can't judge until I've been there. Well, we don't have her life, so we can't say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so while in prison, she wrote her own book called From Darkness to Light, A Battered Woman's Story from Texas Death Row. Yeah. 
Uh, she also started a sewing circle and Bible study slash prayer group with the other three women women in her private cell on death row. Okay. Um, just you know, like so. Did she, she ever apologized to to Shirley and Ronnie? I don't know. I don't have that information. Um, but just you know, so she found uh she found solace in God, like a lot of people do when they're sent to prison and death row and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um. So a few days before her execution was set, uh, her her attorneys uh, um, filed a clemency petition, and it was under review, and they asked the former governor of Texas, George W. Bush, to oh grant her mercy. Really? Uh, yeah. Junior or senior? I'm guessing, because this was uh, around 2000, that it was junior. Around 2000. Wait, in 2000, George Bush was the president. Was he? Yeah. Okay, fine. It was senior then, I'm guessing. I don't know. Wait, I'm confused now. I thought... No, it was in the year 2000. 2001 was 9-11. No, this was, this was 2000. Wait, was he like just about... What? Okay, I, I can't remember when George Bush became president now. Sorry, guys. Our uh, American history is kind of off. Yeah, no. For us Canadians, all we remember was a silly time. <laughs> one, of, one of the many silly times. <laughs> we very much enjoyed the quotes. They were, they were quite humorous <laughs> for us. Like that he didn't know what an import was. I believe that the man and the fish can coincide. <laughs> 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 Fool me once. Shame on, uh, shame on you. <laughs> the point is, a fool can't be fooled again. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, Georgie. <laughs> so I don't know which Bush it is. It we, didn't say. We didn't have to live under your rule, but by God, it was funny for us. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the times. Those were the times. Those were the times. Uh, can't um, even get a rain poncho on properly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a child, really. Yeah, you felt bad for him. <laughs> I but be, not, not I like 100%. when an American dad made fun of him. I want to be naked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was good. Uh, so they claimed that death penalty trial records are full of examples of shoddy work done by ill-prepared defense lawyers. Her appellate attorneys filed motions of effective effectiveness of counsel, stating that her previous lawyer set her up for failure and botched her defense because he wanted to make money by selling the media rights to her story. Oh. Yeah, so... Also, her long history of emotional, psychological, physical, and sexual abuse were never presented as mitigating evidence during her trial. So, what happened to old Betty? I'm getting to it. Uh, Betty's case was also before states uh, started commuting sentences of convicted women who were victims of domestic violence. Um, So, after a certain point, they were like, okay, they... Like, it was more self-defense, so, you know, you're not in prison anymore, is what they started doing. But, unfortunately, it was too late for Betty. Oh. Yeah. Uh, So, their pleas were rejected, and her execution would continue as scheduled. She requested that no family be present, and only her attorney and spiritual advisor were invited to attend. (laughs) So, on February 24th, 2000, Betty was executed at 62 years old by lethal injection. Yeah. She was the second woman in Texas, Texas. And fourth woman in the country to be executed since the Supreme Court reinstated capital punishment in 1976. Wait, they didn't have capital punishment before 1976? They did. They abolished it and then brought it back. That's what I'm saying. When did they abolish it? I don't know. Wow. I just know they reinstated it in 1976. Yeah. That's... That must have been frustrating, you know, <laughs> like generally most countries agree that like, again, this is my opinion, but most countries had capital punishment. And then at some point they're like, nah, we're not going to do this anymore. The states decided we're going to do it again. Well, certain states, not the whole country. I think it's like Florida, Texas, and maybe like two other countries. Ah. Most of the country, I think, doesn't have capital punishment. It's very specific countries. Okay. Or not countries. States. Very specific states. Either way, they're kind of going against history. Whether you think it's right or wrong, I leave that up to you, but hist- you know, most, most countries go ahead and, and move away from capital punishment. It's interesting I, to watch just, someone go back to it. I just think it's not a good idea because it's so easy to make mistakes and that's a person's life. Right, yeah. No, I mean, there's there's definitely. I mean, if you if you look at it, there's going to, no matter what, there will always be a percentage of innocent people that fall through the cracks and get convicted. Yeah. So you have to be okay with some innocent people getting wrongfully executed to try and get the rightfully executed as a whole. And, it, you know, that's kind of like justifying the ends with the means, right? 
some people are okay with it. Others think the ends don't justify the means, right? Like, yeah. if, if even one innocent person gets executed, then the whole rotten system isn't fair, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, but, yeah, moving on. Yeah. Um, so, long story short, an abused woman shot two of her abusive husbands in the head and then made her children help hide their bodies in the backyard. And then blame the children. And then blame the children. <laughs> Later, she claimed self-defense. So she, I believe she did kind of take it back, like, after. She claimed that it was in self-defense. Uh, I'd still. Yeah. Yeah, unless unless she was off her ass when she made that claim that it was her children. I don't know how much. Well, I mean, it did, like, one article said it was her defense attorney, but you have to give permission to yeah, your defense she, attorney. I, yeah, I don't right? buy that. I don't yeah. buy that. The defense attorney's not just going to go ahead and make that claim for his client without consulting her first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's that's lousy. It's it's unfortunate. Uh, the life of Betty Lou. Some people think that you know she like uh isn't a victim in all this, but it's it's hard not to when you know her story. At the end of the day, we're all a product of our environment. I I think that's really true. You know. Yeah. Like you know, if I had Betty Lou's exact genetic makeup, and then I went through exactly Betty Lou's life, I would end up, in my opinion, exactly like Betty Lou. And Betty didn't have a choice over her DNA and she didn't have a choice over her life's, you know, events, not in that crude sense. You know yeah. what I mean? We all, we all can make choices, but how we choose is based up of a per- combination of products that we don't have any choice over. So yeah, exactly. yeah, I don't really like to really say anyone is responsible for becoming a monster or not. They just, some become monsters and some don't. And I think Betty, Betty went through a, a hell of a lot of hardships, but she definitely you know, became a bit of a monstrous person because of it. And again, and I'm, I'm that's, really, that's a lot of people. I, oh, sure. I'm just saying, like, I, and I, you know, I don't really blame her for killing her husbands if they were abusing her. I don't know about Jimmy, but yeah, I don't know about Jimmy. Either. Can't, can't be throwing your kids to the wolves, man. No, hard, hard, hard no. to bounce back from that one. The rest we were all on, like on her side with. Kind of. Yeah. Except yeah. for Jimmy. I was on the fence. I don't want to just assume yeah. Jimmy was evil. Yeah. But he he might've. I mean, her track record's not amazing. It's not hard to believe. Four that. out of five. It's not hard to That's, believe that Jimmy might also have been an asshole. <laughs> I don't know how people keep finding the same type of person, but, you know, yeah. it's very sad. Now we gotta Google when George Bush became president. I swear he was president in 2000, but maybe he was president in 2001. You know what? I have my phone next to me. I'm just gonna do it right now. Maybe it was a one. Maybe he was the. Maybe it was the year before he became president. He was president from 2001 to 2009. Oh, okay, it was right before he became president. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So this was George, George Bush Jr. Or, yes. Yeah, Jr. Yeah. Jr. Yeah, not senior. I don't know when senior was. I think I don't know. He was. He know. was before Clinton. But I think he was before our time. Well, Clinton was right before Bush. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. But anyways, yeah, uh, I, moving on. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening to our podcast. Check out our website, bondingovermurder.info, and find us on Instagram at bondingovermurderpodcast. Just to hang out, see what we're doing, and get info on our new episodes. Yeah. Our next episode will be October 12th. Also, don't forget to follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. We're currently on Spotify and Google Podcasts. You can also find us on the RSS feed on our website. I don't know what any of that means. What, what is an RSS? RSS feed is uh, you can, when you have a podcast player app, you can uh, copy that link onto it and it'll bring it up. So, so we use like Podcast Addict. Well, we use Podcast Addict, right? Yeah. So I used to do that. I had a link from our podcast <laughs> that we listened to. And uploaded it onto that app, and that's yeah, how Sarah, we listen to Sarah it. Sarah set it up for me, so I have, I have no clue. <laughs> I'm I'm the organized one of the two, but um, that was probably apparent already at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, see you next time. Bye.